What's up guys, it's Roger, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use your Blink in Trials of Osiris on Eternity. Now Eternity is a pretty darn good map, and if you want to see my Blink Hunter strategy and build for this map, check out yesterday's video, I'll have that linked in the top right and on the end screen in case you want to watch it after this one. Now when I was doing my Blink Hunter, I did a sniper build. I was showing you some Blink sniper techniques and how to really use your Blink and your snipers really well on Eternity. Now this is not going to be too different because I'm using a scout rifle here. Scout rifles are of course really good on Eternity, and the Tears of Contrition here is no slouch. Why don't we go ahead and check this gun out. Now Tears of Contrition is a 180 RPM legendary scout rifle. You can actually craft this thing and make a beautiful god roll, and that's what I have here. Let's go ahead and check it out. So I have Corkscrew Rifling, Steady Rounds, Enhanced No Distractions, and Enhanced Explosive Payload. Finish that off with Extrovert, which is more of a PvE type thing, but it's still there, so we might as well acknowledge it. Now, no distractions is absolutely beautiful. Aiming this weapon for a very short period of time reduces flinch. I think that reduces flinch by at least like 30% or something like that. I haven't looked at the numbers in a while, but it's it's a crazy amount of reduction in flinch, which of course in this meta is super nice to have. And you only need to aim down sights for I think like 0.5 seconds or something when it's enhanced before that actually procs. So by the time you start clicking your right click or your left tr trigger, you know, whatever it is that you're aiming down sights with, by the time your reticle is all the way on your screen, no distractions is already going to be procced. That's how good and how quickly no distractions procs for you. After that, we have explosive payload, which of course makes this thing have crazy range. And on top of that, a bit of a flinch machine. We can flinch our enemies like crazy with explosive payload because it's going boom, boom, boom in their face like a bunch of firecrackers. Now pairing with that, we are going to be using the Glacioclasm Fusion Rifle. This is a high impact frame, so it takes a very long time to charge. Can be kind of hard to use nowadays, but can still map from a very far distance. Shout out to JH. I'm going to put his comment on screen right now. Always commenting on my videos and watching. Really appreciate it, man. And he said, hey, I want to see some Glacioclasm gameplay. And I was like, you know what? I actually love the Glacioclasm. Why don't I pull that baby? out and we'll take a little bit of a fun trip with it. Now this is last year's Glacioclasm from the last year's Dawning event, not from this year's, but still it's a great gun. We have Hammer Forge Rifling, Accelerated Coils, Surplus, and High Impact Reserves. Finish that off with a masterwork of reload speed, and this thing is pretty saucy. I do wish it charged a little faster, but I gotta say it did the job quite a few times today. Just going with the classic Astro Sight Burst today, you can go ahead and check out all the mods that I am running here, mostly just stuff to help out the Scout Rifle, get some Charge with Fly, some Utility Kickstart stuff, stuff like that, you know how it'd be around here. 65 mobile for today is a pretty good resting spot for me. Let's go ahead and bust down this Void 3.0 real quick. We're going to be using Nova Bomb Vortex, of course I would like to use Nova Warp, but we don't use our roaming supers in Trials because you don't really ever get them charged. If you can get a Nova Warp charged, that's awesome and you're fragging out like Batman, but you're probably not going to do that often, so I would recommend you go ahead and put on the Vortex Bomb. Down here we're going to use Healing Rift, Blink, Pocket Singularity, and then Axion Bolt so we can chase down our enemies with those. Throw those in after you hit them with a few shots from your Scout Rifle. This can oftentimes get you a real nice easy kill. After that we're going to be using Feed the Void to proc our Devour off of any Void ability kills. And then we have Clarence. Shout out to the Old Gods if you want to call him that, but on my channel we call him Clarence. Over here for our fragments, we have Echo of Dilation, as always. While Crouch, you sneak faster and gain enhanced radar resolution. This lets us sneak a little faster and get that enhanced radar resolution, which really lets us break down exactly where our enemies are and know when we want to aggressively push on them because we'll have so much extra information about where they are. After that, we have Echo of Persistence, so our Devourer is going to go from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. This is going to lose you 10 recovery, so make sure you can stay at 100 recov. Of course, you always want to have 100 recov on any class, but you especially want it on Warlock, as that is your class stat. Then we have Echo of Expulsion. Void ability final blows cause targets to explode. So you blow them up with a nade or your melee or, or clearance tickles their cheeks a little too hard and they're going to explode a second time after they initially die. Might take a teammate out with them, it's pretty nice stuff right there. Finishing off we have Echo of Leeching, so melee final blows start health regeneration for you and nearby allies. Now at first I didn't really understand why you would want to use this when you have Devour on, so I never really used this before, but I was actually talking to Vortex, one of my puffer people, shout out to my puffer people by the way, Vortex, drop for survival, and Cranky Panky. Thank you so much. If you want to be a puffer person yourself, go below this video, click the join button, you can check that out. But that's not what we're talking about right now. Right now we're talking about Echo of Leeching. So usually you're going to kill somebody with your enhanced melee. It's going to proc Devour. That's really nice. But if you don't have your enhanced melee up, what you can do is just use your Echo of Leeching to get a regular kill, and it'll immediately start some health regeneration and help you heal a little bit in the middle of a melee battle. Maybe help you take out a few different enemies within one melee shotgun battle, something like that. So this is a pretty darn good fragment. But with all that, I think we have everything covered. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments or join the Blinkfield Discord server. At any point in this video, if you want to leave me a like, I would very much appreciate that. That tells YouTube, hey, I'm enjoying the video and then they can show it to more people. It's really easy. It's just one little click or one little tap of your screen if you're on mobile. I would really, really appreciate that and it would really make my day. But with all that covered, I think we're about ready to get into it. So why don't we go ahead and blink on into this. Okay, so as per usual, this is my very first round with this loadout. You know, I always like to get my first round for a few reasons. The biggest reason is that I want to show off my exact thought process when I start, because I have some ideas in my mind where I want to go, sure, but I don't always know exactly what my 
you know, its strategy is going to be at the first round of each weekend. That's what I like to figure out, and that's why I like using different loadouts every single time I play a map. So you can see here, I actually took a far flank on the outside, was distracting from my teammates and hoping we can get some team shots, maybe I could get my own pick or something. Unfortunately, they had a nice little sight and shield there, so I couldn't really do too much. My teammate died, and I knew I needed to get a nice flank behind them if I wanted to take these guys out, so that's exactly what I did. I start firing down lane here real hard, and you can see my first match, look how much lag was on that guy. I was just sinking bullets into his head, and unfortunately, they weren't really going in until, boom, they all loaded at once and he dies. Now, I will say this Tears of Contrition is good for a lot of things. Anti-flinch, applying flinch, and team shotting. Now, of course, the reason DMT is so strong and why it's such a good crutch for a lot of players right now is because it's so good for team shotting. It does so much damage with one singular shot that you barely have to aim because it basically aims itself even when hip firing, and then people can just do that with multiple ones of them on a single team. Yeah. That's pretty strong if you ask me, and that's kind of the problem with DMT right now, and there is a lot of DMT on Eternity right now. You're going to see, even in Freelancer, a lot of DMTs. Now, of course, you're not having to deal with stacks that are using DMT, so the team shots aren't as, you know, uh, present, but they still happen sometimes, just because you're going to find Freelance matches where people are still all using DMT. That's just luck of the draw. You can see, though, smack these guys pretty hard in the head. Now, here's something interesting. Every single gun now has full auto. I didn't used to use full auto retrofit. Oh, and by the way, that guy actually did use his bubble. He popped his bubble. I panic popped right before I used my Nova Bomb, and I just slapped his puss up. It was so good. Now, like I'm saying, everything has full auto retrofit. I never used to use full auto retrofit on this scout rifle because it just didn't feel right to me. I wanted to take my time with every individual shot so I could keep hitting headshots as much as possible. But now I have counterbalance stock on with full auto retrofit, except for it's not a retrofit anymore, it's just the setting. And that feels way better to me and I've been actually liking the full auto and just holding down my mouse the entire time that I'm shooting and smacking people on the head pretty good. That blink right there is one to keep in mind. You can fly straight through that crack and then go right into the enemy's crack, put your hand up there and rip out their small intestines. Now, this is a place I like to go a lot, right behind this balls. I like to call these the balls or the testes, you know, however you want to call it is fine, but I call them the testes. So I'm behind testy number one here, put a rift down, get Clarence out there, and I'm just taking shots on these enemies, waiting for my teammates to maybe help me team shot. This guy flies up a little high. Unfortunately, I was like, they're throwing a lot of stuff at me. They know I'm behind here. My teammate is stuffing me with him, you know, behind this testy, and that's not something I want to deal with. So I backed up, I repositioned, I used my blink to get into a better position for myself. Smack one down, reload really quick, level up my weapon right here, the game has to just tell me that right in the middle of a fight. We're going to smack down the other two with our tears and contrition here, and you can see why this gun is so formidable. You can hit so well on people, applying so much flinch on them, and taking barely any flinch because of no distractions. Again, a 35% flinch reduction from no distractions. That's insane when you think about it. And I'm not somebody who runs a lot of resilience in my kit. And that's not because I don't want to. It's because my armor doesn't really help me do that. I try to build into recovery, discipline, and then a decent amount, at least 60 to 80 on my mobility. So it's kind of hard to get a really good resilience stat on top of that. So I kind of just don't even worry about it. I go over here and I just build the stats I need to build, and then if I can find a perk like no distractions that lets me take less flinch, then that's what I like to use over anything else because I think it helps a lot. Now these guys were just so warming me with so much stuff, took some good shots on that guy. You do need four headshots no matter what range you're at with this scout rifle to kill, okay? You need four headshots. Now you can see how much extra damage we're doing with explosive payload. You hit someone in the head from there, 41. Take my glacial plasma out as I blink behind this guy, boom, smack him in the face, blink above this guy, throw my super down at him, take him out, devour his proc, leading for the last guy, he flies around the corner, smack him with the glacial plasma too. Absolute mappage on that. Those guys were really annoying me, so I was happy to beat their pussies up right there and put them in the fucking dirt. Now you can see here, we're behind testing number one again, have our dilation radar, see this enemy, flick over to him, take him out really quick, reload, looking for the next guy, see him in front of us here, my teammate's pushing forward with some invis, I choose to put down my Clarence Rift, and then I can just use Clarence to get on this guy so he can't get the res. If Clarence can hold a res down, take some damage on the enemy, then they can't get the res. Unfortunately, he did there. Push this guy back with a volatile proc from the pocket singularity, that's going to explode him, do a little damage to the other enemy, take them both out with some nice glacioclasm shots, and I have to say this glacioclasm is feeling absolutely crispy. This is why I always like the Glacial Classroom, because it can hit from so far away in one shot. I think like 16, 18 meters, like JH was saying in his comment earlier, you can just map people with. Especially with high impact reserves, this thing is an absolute beauty. If you don't have one from the dawning yet, before the event goes away here, please go and get one. I, I very much implore you, even if you think you're not good with high impact uh, fusion rifles, you can do the practice and get pretty darn good with them, and this is the one that you want to practice with above all else. It has such a nice little scope on it, you'll see when I zoom in right here. Look at that beautiful little red dot on it, and you can map people from that distance extremely easily, and even farther away 
just as easy. And, and that's what you really have to keep attention to because that thing, it has the range of a god, I'll tell you that much right now. I was falling back here, I want to put my rift down, take a three peak with that, and I put my rift down on the middle section right there. I could have put it more to the right or more to the left, but what I did is I put my rift right in the middle of that little hallway so that I could peek on the left or the right and still be standing in my rift. Make sure you're paying attention to things like that so that if you ever have to actually use your rift, you can use it from both sides if you position it correctly. Now we're coming in here, I like to challenge this right side a lot. If there are sniper players on the enemy team, I will not always challenge the outside if I'm not sniping. When I'm using my tears of contrition here, I don't like to challenge the snipers too much because they have a much easier time killing me than I do killing them. You can see we smacked that first guy with Glacial Plasm. I do a lot of extra damage to these guys in the hallway with my Glacial, but none of them die. The second guy does go down here because of my teammate, and then I'm getting ready to push the last one. I blink forward onto him, get ready to fight, but he kind of backed up a little bit, but that's okay, because I can easily map him with the Glacial Plasm. I think like 73 per smack there with the bullets to the body. Absolutely amazing damage coming out from the Glacial. Now you can see here, I'm standing behind testy number two because it's a little bit farther back and you can take some nice angles on these guys like this. Now this is around three, four, so I knew where they wanted to peek from by this point in the match. So that's why I was peeking on the left side and just waiting for them to peek me. Cause you have to remember, you're gonna be learning your enemy's habits as you go through a match. At least you very much should if you wanna play against your enemies the best you can. So you need to make a mental note of yourself. Okay, this guy's sniping from here every round. This guy's holding with a fusion rifle on the right side all the time flanking us, this guy is always holding mid with his DMT crutch, whatever it may be, keep that in mind and then play around that. Say okay, since I know this guy likes to sit back, I can blink on top of him, bait out his blade barrage, and now I can blink on top of him with my glacial plasm and take him out with an easy burst, you know? Think about things like that, think what guns they have, and keep that stuff in mind because that's what's really going to allow you to get the drop on your enemies and take them out the best you can. Now this guy's sitting way back behind Testy, I wanted to get some angles on him. First I throw out the Axion Bolt. Now Axion Bolts are absolutely beautiful for tracking your team, your uh, enemies. You can see 97 damage to that guy. Teammate's nade takes him out beautifully. We had a great nade combo there where we just put him into the dirt. I'm looking for the last guy, my blink was not quite up yet, but it was right there. Throw out my pocket singularity, right there, you see I knew he was going to come through that corner. In, or the uh, hallway there, I should say. If he didn't come through that corridor, then it was just gonna push him back with a pocket singularity. And at the very least, he was gonna become volatile. That's exactly what happened. I pull out the Glacioclasm, and that was a perfect example right there of how much range the Glacioclasm has because of how far I mapped him right there. You can see, take some good shots with my teammates here, absolutely riddling these guys. When I had Clarence taken like this, I had one goal, fly in with my fusion rifle. So that's what I did. I didn't even really have to use it. My teammate came around with a beautiful push with his sidearm. Clarence was just tickling their cheeks to next stun day. And we put them into the dirt. Smacking this guy, he wants to sit behind Testy. I'm like, sorry, brother. It says not to stick their cancer awareness month. So I'm going to have to go ahead and give you a nice little grow up right there and put you into the dirt. Take out your buddy too for good measure while I'm at it. Blink across the tip here, but I don't even really have to blink across and go into the third enemy because my teammate actually took out the third enemy. So hey, you love to see some follow up from the teammates for once. <laughs> Flick onto this guy on the left, smack him with a body shot and a headshot to take him out. Nice team shots from the teammates there. Looking in the hallway to look where my teammate died, okay? If my teammate just died in hallway, they're probably going to be in hallway. Way. They actually went all the way around and came back to this guy's res, so I take out the first one, using my pocket singularity there to push him backwards and then charge up my fusion rifle blast. If I just charged up my fusion rifle blast without pushing him back first, it wasn't going to go very well for me, was it? Because he was just a titan standing on top of me. He could punch me twice before I could charge that up all the way, so you got to be careful of stuff like that. I was just trying to hit this guy in the head a few times, and I actually did hit him in the head, I think three times there. Got Clarence on top of him, and was trying to get an angle with my Glacio. Saw the teammate was going crazy in there, so I wanted to see if I could help him. Throw in the Axion Bolt there, because I knew the third guy was back there. And look at this. Three, two, ooh, tickle those cheeks, baby. That's exactly what I was waiting for. I do have on that fragment, like I showed you, that makes the Axion Bolts chase for a longer amount of time. And when you have that on, they chase for decades. So if your enemy's not paying attention, or if they don't have the time to stop and shoot your Axion Bolt, Chances are it's probably going to hit eventually and do anywhere from like 120 to 180 damage because depending on what their light levels are and stuff, it can do different amounts of damage. That's kind of the thing with trials is different things will do different amounts of damage than they would in like survival, you know, because it's light level matters and I kind of hate light level to be honest with you, but uh, hey, that's kind of just how it is. So you got to get used to it. Now I saw the red light from that guy's sniper, so I knew he was sniping at me. I was holding this angle right here. See how that worked out for me? What you can do is position yourself to where you're not peeking the entire lane, but you're only peeking as much as you need to, to get the angle on your enemies. That's exactly what I did. Me and Gay Bowser were just smacking these guys down. He was using his lame and arc. I 
I was actually kind of mad at him because he was like throwing one, one or two rounds and then I was like, okay, with a name like Gay Bowser, I can't be mad at this guy. That's just hilarious. So we went ahead and smacked those guys up pretty, pretty well, if I can say so myself. Blinking around here, again, using my blink for a lot of different things. Using my blink for aggression, but especially right here, using my blink for a rotation. Using your blink on rotations is big on sniper builds, but it also works very well on something like a scout rifle build because you have such long range and what you're going to be wanting to doing a lot of the time is getting around your enemies and getting on different positions on them so you can actually take the best fights possible against said enemies. You can see right here the airborne effectiveness is actually pretty darn good. I hit two headshots really easily with this thing. Fly around on this guy really quick. Teammate takes him out. I used my pocket singularity unfortunately, but it didn't really matter. And again right there, look how long I had my Axion bolt out and it still killed that guy. That thing was fluttering around the ecosystem for about two hours before it finally went straight between his ass cheeks and just collapsed him like he had, well, like he had the clap, to be honest with you. Now, I'm taking some shots at this guy in case he wants to re-peek his head, throw my rift down, grab Clarence, blink across here, take a nice little angle on to the hallway here. That guy runs away, throw in the Axion Bolt, and I'm just waiting to get an angle on this guy. I blink over them. Here comes Pocket Singularity, take some nice shots, boom, boom, take him out, and he actually died from Control Demolition there because I activated my Volatile proc and blew him up with Control Demolition, so we love to see that. Now we are in a 4-4 round here, so your boy, you know he wants to clutch, so I'm looking around, I have my Vortex Bomb, I can use that pretty well if I need to, but I just need to get a good chance to use it. I play safe, I go backwards, I use my range, I have Clarence out, and I'm just waiting for them to peek, watching my dilation radar while I'm crouching, so I can see exactly how many enemies are in front of me and how I want to push them. There goes my Axiom Bolt. Again, 97 on both of those guys. Now I know they're a little low, I could push them if I wanted to, I decide not to push yet, and then I think, hmm, maybe I can just get a quick pick with my super here and pop off after that. There goes one super down from the enemy after I killed him with that. There goes the second super guy, and just like that, it's a 2v1, and we're just waiting to take out this last guy. I don't know how he wants to fight me, and I think he was dead messenger crushing, so I wasn't very much wanting to fight him in any kind of close range. I was letting my teammates push him and just waiting until I could use any kind of aggression, so that's what I did. Blink up behind him, punch him in the ass cheek, and my teammate takes him out quite handily right there. Now I am coming into my last two plays here, so I want to say thank you so much for watching. Again, if you want to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, or hit that notification bell to see more in the future, I would really, really appreciate that, and all those things really do help the channel out so much. Uh, if you want to join the Discord, Blinkfield Discord server is always going to be linked in the description and in the top right, so you can come in there and talk to me and make a bunch of other Blink friends, whether you're a Blink Warlock or a Blink Hunter, or honestly, even if you're a little crayon munching Titan, you can come in and make some friends in there. We love talking about Destiny and our days and just really anything else, to be honest, and I'd love to see you in there. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, definitely check out the Tears of Contrition. I know that people kind of sleep on this gun a little bit. You know, they sleep on a lot of scout rifles. Even though scout rifles are pretty good right now, I feel like people don't really acknowledge much other than DMT because they just have to use our little crutchy crutchy DMT. And it's like, there are so many fun, interesting, and good scout rifles out there just like this one. So please go into your vault if you have one of these, take it out. And if you can craft one, then definitely do that because this thing is an absolute monster. And I swear to you, you'll be smacking some booty cheeks of people using the DMT in no time with this thing because it is absolutely beautiful gun. All that being said though, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna let this play play out for you guys and I really appreciate you. So as always, have a great day, Guardians.